Today's review is sponsored by Marital Separation Swords, because sometimes a fight to the death is cheaper than a divorce. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Possession. This is a weird ass movie, but I absolutely love it. Possession is a movie from 1981 that was put on the infamous video Nasties list. I've been wanting to see this movie for years, but it was out of print for a while, and the only copies I could find of this movie were very expensive. But Umbrella Entertainment put it on Blu-ray, so I was finally able to see it. Now, this is region-free, but it is marked as Region B on the back. Uh, don't let that fool you. If you buy it on Amazon or through Umbrella Entertainment, it is region-free. This movie is fucking bizarre. I have quite a bit to say about this one, so let's just get into it. <coughs> Possession is not a demonic possession movie, it's a movie about the destruction of a marriage. And the fake sponsor I had at the beginning of this video is purely coincidence. Seriously, I did not make that connection until I started filming this video. <laughs> Lay off me, I'm tired. The movie takes place in Germany. It was filmed in Germany back in 1981, and it was filmed right by the Berlin Wall. We follow Mark, played by Sam Neill. He's a spy who has just come back from a long mission. You can't just say you don't know. That's what you said on the phone. When will you know? He's returning home to his son Bob and his wife Anna, played by Isabel Ajani. Upon Mark's return, he notices that Anna has become distant and she soon reveals that she wants a divorce. I need some time to think. What do you mean to think? Think about what? To think about me. Oh, oh, where are you? When were you? Mark learns that Anna has been seeing another man who he confronts, and it does not go well. But then he learns that Anna is no longer seeing this guy, and she's now seeing another stranger. Mark doesn't want his marriage to end, so he desperately tries to get Anna to stay with him. But she's drifting further and further into madness. And at the same time, so is Mark. We eventually find out who Anna's new lover is. And dear God, what we have here are some of the most batshit crazy performances you'll see in movies. No one is good or bad, but if you want, I am the bad one. And if I knew he existed in this world, I would have never had Bob with you! Like I said, Possession is a weird movie. Not abstract, eraserhead levels of weird, but it is an odd movie it would fit more into the category of arthouse horror. People talk about elevated horror like a lot of A24 movies. Those kinds of movies have existed for decades. Possession is one of them. Because of that, this movie is not going to be for everyone. I love this flick. This is the kind of movie that you're either going to love, you're going to hate, or you're not going to know what to make of this flick. But regardless of what your position is, once you see this movie, you're not going to be able to forget it. And you're going to be thinking about it, whether you like or dislike the flick. I can see people not liking this movie the first time they watch it, and then on a rewatch, they will like it more. But I can also understand the other side of it, people liking it the first time and then liking it less on second viewings. This is the kind of movie where its audience is going to be all over the place. The movie, at its core, is about a marriage falling apart, and how sometimes people can stay in relationships even though they should not be together anymore. I can do it 
myself. My job. I'm better at it. Maybe you could do it when both. Possession says a lot about how a relationship can go sour, divorce, basically all the ways a relationship can go bad, the toxic things that can happen during this time, and the psychological effects of all of this. Possession is a disturbing movie, but not in a graphic way. There is blood and nudity, but it's disturbing on an emotional level, not so much a graphic level. Everyone in this movie gives an over-the-top performance. Did I tell you I had a wife and a daughter? No. They live in Cincinnati. And what does that do for you? They will always remain my first family. Anna will be the second, and you, and Bob in some sense. Do you have a dog? That can be a lot of fun in movies that are trying to be fun. In a movie that's trying to be more serious, over-the-top acting can go either way. In Possession, it works. <laughs> this is a movie where everyone is thinking with their emotions, not their brains. Most of the characters are letting their emotions drive their decisions, drive their actions, and as a result, they're not thinking rationally. <laughs> Let's face it, emotions are not rational. That's why you should not make an important decision unless you're calm and collected. Important advice, people. Write it down. Isabella Johnny gives a great performance in this. She's able to take this weird acting style and make it work so well. Everyone in this movie does a great job with their over-the-top performances, but she is without question the best actor in this movie. But at the same time, I know there's the third possibility, you know, like cancer or madness, but cancer or madness controls reality. The possibility I'm talking about pierces reality. There's a scene where she has blood pouring out of her mouth, and when she talks, the mix of blood and saliva causes her to fumble with her words a little, and she just lets the blood and spit kind of fly all over the place. I love that. What's gonna happen to us? He's after you! Then stop coming! I have to go! I'll follow you! Don't even try! I like spit in my movies. In real life, when someone is overcome with emotion, they just let the snot and spit fly all over the place. When that's done in movies, I think it's a nice touch. Anna is a character that's clearly mentally unstable. She should not be in a relationship or marriage while she's not mentally well. It's very quiet here when you're, when you're out. It was very quiet when you weren't Then we have Mark, who does not want to let her go. He does not want his marriage to end. It's obvious that the best thing for both of these people would be if they went their separate ways, but Mark will not allow that. You know, when I'm away from you, I think of you as, as, as an animal or a woman possessed, and then, and then I see you again, and all this disappears. You must try and help me. Tell me. That's a common element you see in a lot of bad relationships. The two people involved are no longer in love with each other, but they're in love with the idea of each other. They're in love with the idea of being in a relationship, and that's not a healthy way to live. I had a friend who thought this way. He was so desperate to be in a relationship that he would get involved with any woman that would give him attention. As a result, he had a lot of toxic relationships and he ended up screwing a few people over. Everybody watching this video, whether you're a man, a woman, or anything in between, know your worth. Don't just get into a relationship because you think you have to be in a relationship. <laughs> Advice from a weirdo on the internet. That's not to say we sympathize with one character over the other. The movie does a good job at having us sympathize and condemn both Mark and Anna. On the one hand, Anna has been cheating on Mark, but on the other hand, 
Mark has been emotionally distant throughout their relationship, and it's hinted at that he has not been 100% faithful either. It's made all the more complicated because they have a son. It all shows how messy divorce can be. Try to tell me that you care about him all that much. He didn't stop you from breaking us up. If you really thought about him, you'd give a thought to us, for Christ's sake. I do, I do! No, you don't. You think about buying him a pair of shoes, about, about <laughs> making him a snack. Now, in order to talk about the horror aspects of this movie, I'm going to have to get into spoilers. So that's a spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I do highly recommend people watch Possession before watching the rest of this video. But at the same time, I understand that this movie is hard to find on streaming. Uh, but if you do want to get a copy of Possession, I say go for it. I can wait. All set? Okay, here we go. So, as the movie goes on, we learn that Anna's secret lover is a slimy tentacle monster. The horror comes from a combination of both Mark and Anna descending into madness, and the fact that Anna is having a sexual relationship with this inhuman tentacle monster, and she will do anything to protect it, including murder. These are some brutal kills. They're not the most creative deaths, but through the filmmaking and the acting, the kills stand out. These are some fantastic deaths. What really makes this relationship creepy, other than the fact that a human woman is having sex with a tentacle monster, is that the creature continues to evolve throughout the film, becoming more human-looking. When we get to the final act, we see that the creature has transformed into a replica of Mark. It is finished now. Doppelgangers are a core theme in Possession. Not only do we have this creature turning into a Mark look-alike, but throughout the film, Mark has continuing encounters with Bob's teacher, who looks exactly like Anna, and he starts having feelings for her. Which doesn't mean I admire your words, but I find pathetic these stories of women contaminating the universe. <laughs> I'm one of the contaminated. Both Anna's doppelganger and Mark's doppelganger are basically what each character wants the other to be. You see this in certain relationships. A person falls in love with the idea of the person they're dating or married to. They want their version of that partner, not necessarily who their partner is. You see this in some relationships. A person tries to form their partner into what they want their partner to be. How many times have you seen someone date a bad person and they say, well, I can change them? Again, that's not a healthy way to live. Mark and Anna are two people who should not be together anymore. But in a way, they're both staying together because they're both holding on to what they want their marriage to be. It's just that their marriage isn't that anymore. If it ever was. Like I said at the beginning, Possession is a movie that is not going to be for everyone. But it is a movie that I think that everyone should watch. Everyone's going to have their own interpretation of this movie. I encourage you to watch other videos on Possession, because I think it's interesting to see other people's interpretations. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of nine. The kills consist of, but are not limited to, stabbings, gunshots, and drowning. There's a fair amount of nudity in this flick, mostly Anna's breasts. The acting is over the top, but it works. It's a movie where people are letting their emotions get the better of them, so the acting style makes sense. I love Isabella Johnny in this film. She is fearless. Everyone is great in this movie, but her performance is the best. 
Possession is a disturbing movie, but not in the traditional way. It's disturbing at an emotional level. The kills are great. Not flashy, but raw and brutal. This is an art house horror movie, so not everyone is going to like it. This is a movie where everyone is going to have a different interpretation, and whatever your interpretation is, it's not wrong. I'm giving this a 4.6 out of 5. That rating might get higher the more I watch it, but keep in mind, this movie is not for everyone. I love it, but not everyone will. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Uh, please leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite movie about divorce. This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Now, before you all judge Anna for sleeping with some weird tentacle monster, remember that hentai exists. I guess octopussy is a real thing. <laughs>